He was born on the 15th Sha'ban 255 after Hijra in the city of Samarra. The moment on us and singular aspects of his birth greatly resembled those under which the Prophet Musa was born. The birth of Prophet Musa had signaled the downfall and extinction of the empire of Pharaoh, who had ordered the slaying of all the newly born children of Bani Israel. The Abbasid kings were similarly apprehensive of the continuous traditions of the Holy Prophet about the birth of Imam Mahdi, who was to bring about a curse to their Abbasid very empire. They were therefore laying in ambush to discover the birth of the Imam and to put an end to his life. But the event of the Imam's birth was enveloped and shielded by the same divine protection and miraculous phenomena which had marked the historical births of Prophet Musa. His births remained strictly confidential and his nursery shrouded in secrecy except to a few devotees. The Imam's birth had coincided with the reign of al mutamad the well-known Abbasid king. He being aware of the prophecy of the 12th Imam's birth occurring in his reign was extremely worried and anxious to trace him out. But on the death of Imam Hassan Askari, peace be upon him, when he was informed about the Imam's funeral prayer having been conducted by his four-year-old son, his perplexity knew no bounds. It struck his mind that this very boy must be the Imam, but he managed to hide his inner concern at the news of the existence of the young Imam, in order to get confirmation that the young Imam did in fact exist. He ordered the arrest of the Imam's mother, Nargis Khatun. In a tradition upon whose authenticity all Muslims agree, the Holy Prophet said, Even if the entire duration of the world's existence 
has already been exhausted and only one day is left before doomsday or day of judgment, Allah will expand that day to such a length of time as to accommodate the kingdom of a person out of my Ahlul Bayt who will be called by my name. He will then fill out the earth with peace and justice as it will have been full of injustice and tyranny before then. The context of precious tradition informs the golden divine promises will take place sooner or later, one way or another, as mentioned in most of the Shi'it and Sunni sources. In a tradition, the Holy Prophet said to the commander of believers, Ali, that there will be twelve gods, Imam, after me, the first of whom is you, O Ali, and the last one will be the support, al Qa'im, who, with the grace of Allah, will gain victory over the whole east and west of the world. The occultation of the twelfth Imam is divided into two parts. The first, the minor occultation, Qibat al sukra which began in 259 after Hijra, or 873 Christian calendar, and ended in 329 after Hijra, or 939 Christian calendar, lasting about 70 years. And that period, people were in contact him through four special deputies. That period, several as preparing people for the absence of Imam. The second, the major occultation which commands in 329 after Hijra or 939 in Christian calendar and will continue as long as God wills it. There is no special deputy in direct contact with him in this period and Muslim scholars are regular deputies of him at this time without having ability to say him. Imam Mahdi said, Rest assured that no one has a special relation with Allah. Whoever denies me is not from my community. The appearance of the relief, Al-Faraj, depends solely upon Allah. Therefore, those who propose a certain time for it are liars. As to the benefit of my existence in occultation. It is like the benefit of the sun behind the clouds where the eyes do not see it. Indeed, my existence is an amnesty for inhabitants of the earth. Pray much to Allah to hasten the relief, for therein also lies the release from your sufferings. Inshallah, we will see that moon behind the clouds soon. Oh uh-huh.